Listen, I love me some The Last of Us and God of War. I greatly appreciate PlayStation's focus on cinematics and high production value as of the last decade. However, I also want more of this. Since Media Molecule decided to spend forever working on Dreams, they've been absent. I miss Tearaway and Little Big Planet. Insomniac is somewhat keeping the spirit alive with Ratchet and Clank, but that's not enough. Team Asobi has come in and reinvigorated PlayStation as a brand in some ways. I felt some weird feelings while playing this game, feelings I haven't quite felt in a while. Usually when I get really into a game, it's because I love the risk and reward systems, the challenge, or the sense of discovery and exploration. Astrobot doesn't really rely on any of these to keep me engaged. It certainly uses discovery of the bots to its advantage, and I loved exploring the worlds, but it does something else that somehow feels very unique lately. It made me feel pure, unadulterated joy while playing a video game. It totally brings me back to when I was younger. It's funny, because I'm usually pretty harsh about dismissing nostalgia as a factor when it comes to judging games or discussing them in an in-depth way. People rely way too much on nostalgia to help form their opinion. I'm constantly wary of people putting games from 20 or 30 years ago on a pedestal and claiming, Nothing as good has come since. I think that's simply untrue. Games are generally better than they've ever been in many ways. However, in this exact instance, nostalgia hits me like a truck and I like it. Every time I found a new bot before interacting with it, I tried to figure out who it was and what they were from. I was right on maybe three quarters of them. Some obscure PS1 JRPGs and a few other Japan-centric characters threw me for a loop, but for the most part, I figured it out. This was one of my favorite parts about the game, just being able to slowly unravel not just PlayStation's history with video game characters, but the entire industry via third-party inclusions was a joy. Seeing the inclusion of certain characters just lit a smile on my face. The knight from Demon Souls and the maiden in black were surprising and very welcome inclusion. Spyro just straight up being Spyro was hilarious. Some of the animations you unlocked by getting each character's accessory via the gacha machine were super cool. I loved Cole's karma mechanic, changing his lightning colors from Infamous. I loved Kratos chucking his axe at you and freezing whoever it hit. The way Amaterasu was represented was beautiful. I could easily just list off a hundred more bots that I loved to see. The point is, Team Asobi cares about video games. This game is a love letter to video games in general, and I love it for that. The amount of tiny details in so many different ways is fantastic to see. Now let's not get it twisted. This game is simply a wonderful platformer on its own merit as well. The platforming is tight and responsive. You've got a fun arsenal of movement options at your disposal, even if it's fairly simple. The fact that this game feels as though it's an extrapolation of Super Mario Sunshine's challenge levels mixed with some Mario Galaxy mechanics, mixed with Flood mechanics, mixed with Pikmin mechanics, mixed with some Captain Toad shenanigans, I could go on. It's a combination of so many other games. The funny thing is, it's mostly Nintendo. Nintendo games. Astrobot is a Nintendo game that is finally able to harness the power and production level of a modern console. It's nice to play something like this that isn't held back by Nintendo's consistently outdated hardware. I love plenty of Nintendo games by the way, I'm just saying though, you know it's true. The scale and silliness of the boss fights were great. The five levels that were based off of iconic PlayStation games were awesome to see. I did love how they based them off of particular console generations. For example, the first world ending with a PS1 game, Reincarnation, then PS2, PS3, PSP, and then PS4. A tiny gripe that I have is that it feels like they erased the original God of War from existence. It's weird because they clearly used God of War to be the PS2 representative based on the pattern I just described, but it was solely the PS4 iteration. The whole time I was waiting for the level to re-enter the Greek era and to pick up a bot that was the Greek Kratos or something. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. That's honestly probably my biggest disappointment with the game, which says a lot because this game is incredible. I love the power-ups. Again, they're really tripling up on sunshine references. The vertical and horizontal rocket propellers are straight out of Isle Delfino itself too. You literally have three of the four flood mechanics in this game. Wild. I was super happy to see that as sunshine is my favorite Mario game. Don't at me. The arms frog punchers were cool, as was every other power-up. I had a good time with them all. The coolest one might be the one that slows down time. Again, this is where they're able to harness the power of the console more than Nintendo can. The slowdown effects were eye candy. Normally, I don't really care about this stuff, but when a game can pull off spectacle really well, it certainly adds to the experience. The one enemy that throws cards at you and then you freeze time to jump on them to get to the enemy? So cool. I love how this game rewards your curiosity. That's something that I've grown to care about a lot in games. When you're able to go, can I do this? And then do it and then get something for it, I love that. Sometimes in this game, the bots were in places that I thought I wasn't supposed to be able to reach. Those were the tougher ones. Usually when I saw something that looked unreachable, but I was determined to get there, what I was rewarded with was merely a coin. Honestly, I love that. It's just the devs going, yeah, we knew some people were going to be curious about this little platform. So here you go. Love it, love it, love it.
Getting the Platinum Trophy in this was a great time. The music is so joyous, the worlds are bursting with color, the bots ooze personality, the platforming is smooth, satisfying, and just difficult enough. I found the game a tad on the easy side, but it fits the game, so I'm fine with that. The collectibles are fun to find. On top of that, I appreciate that they're actually meaningful. Finding everything in a level was of the utmost importance. I never moved on without finding everything. This was usually accomplished on my first run through. Occasionally, I'd miss something and have to redo a level, which is fine. It's really hard to find anything negative to say about this game. This is a video game. Nah, this is video games. Give me more of this. This doesn't mean I don't want all of the other things you do as well, PlayStation, but I want more of this too. I hope this sells well. I hope this still resonates with a more casual audience. Clearly, people that are super into video games love it. But is it a commercial hit? I guess we'll see. Feel free to follow me on Twitch at DGuns. Feel free to check out my backlog to where these reviews come from. If you want to see them in written form before I make videos out of them, if I make videos out of them, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to do every one necessarily. I'm not sure. And thank you to those that support me on Patreon. Currently, we've got The Mex Factor, Kinoth, Scion, Hookie, BioBadger, and Rod. If you'd like to support me over there, feel free to check it out. This and all the other links are in the description. Thanks for watching.